Anti-estrogens in bodybuilding, part one, clomiphene. This is a very old fashioned infertility medicine that's been around for many, many decades, used mainly for women. It's also been used classically in the recreational and professional anabolic steroid bodybuilding world for PCT. It's also used for male infertility associated with anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. And of course, it's used as a sole agent for TRT, and we'll see about that. The history of clomiphene starts in 1956 with a team of scientists at Merle Chemical Company where they developed this compound. And in 1961, they started doing human trials on women that had infertility secondary to problems ovulating because this medicine increased ovulation. Now, several years later in the mid 60s, they realized that this would also work for male subjects. So they tested it on men and they found that it increased both gonadotropins, LH and FSH, and led to an increased sperm count. Now, since the 1960s, this compound is definitely the most commonly prescribed infertility medicine, mainly for women, but also for men. The mechanism of action of clomiphene. This is a classic selective estrogen receptor modulator, a triphenylethylene compound that is a synthetic estrogenic chemical. It has both stimulatory actions throughout the body in different site tissue sites and inhibitory actions. That's why it's a receptor modulator. That's what that means. In the hypothalamus, it acts as an anti-estrogen, interfering with normal estrogenic negative feedback, resulting in an increased pulsatile release of gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, stimulating subsequently an increase in LH and FSH. From that point, obviously it's gonna hit the gonads and have the, this effect. Medical uses classically for clomiphene. Number one, infertility for women. It's interesting that male infertility has never been studied well, unlike that for the women, and it only works for men that have a secondary hypogonadal type. So the failure for men has to occur somewhere in the hypothalamus or pituitary for this agent to work. It will not work if they have a primary failure in the testes site. Other medical uses for clomiphene, TRT. Very interesting, in the last 10 years or so, other doctors, and including myself, we've used this agent for men for low testosterone states. Now, I have to differentiate something very important that I've discovered, and other physicians and experts and people in the world that are involved in this type of work have realized this too, that men that have used anabolic steroids as a history have been exposed, their central nervous systems have been exposed to steroids. When they use this compound, either in PCT or classically for TRT, long term, it, they feel horrible. They have poor mood response, despite on paper increasing testosterone and of course sperm counts. So we have to differentiate that. The man that's used steroids in the past most commonly does poorly as a sole agent. Men that have not had prior exposure, that have low T from organic causes, this agent can work for them. I want that to be sent out. I want that, that note to be known very, very carefully that it's not used well for men for TRT only that have prior steroid exposure, but it could be used well even for years. I have experience with men doing very well in this agent just by itself for years. Next. The classic effect in the bodybuilding world for PCT, post-cycle therapy. Dr. Michael Scali, and you'll see in the historical notes, has used this drug 
And there's so many renditions and variations of this type of classic PCT. Typically, it's three drugs. It's human chorionic gonadotropin, tamoxifen, which is actually another type of selective estrogen receptor modulator, and clomiphene. Now, it's very interesting. So in this type of classic PCT, you have two serms that are being used. And again, there's so many variations on this. Now, why? This is the shorter and the least used of the serms versus tamoxifen. This clomiphene is used for a short period, about 30 days. And why is it used? Why is it a shorter acting time than, than tamoxifen, longer acting? It's a stronger stimulatory agent for LH and FSH in the central nervous system. It also can lead to, paradoxically, increased estrogen systemic levels in the body. So, tamoxifen is probably a better agent to use long term through and during and into the continuation period for PCT because it's really more anti-estrogenic in the periphery for gynecomastia. There it is. And it's a softer step down. That's why these two serms are used classically with the PCT regimen. Now, there's no data for this. That's why I'll be working on this in research. The other effect in used more in a modern fashion for clomiphene, anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. Now we have experts using this drug again, sometimes erroneously as a sole agent, as I described prior, but it's interesting that currently there's some papers coming out by other experts in America saying this is a good drug to add on to HCG. So man is using steroids, comes off withdrawal period. We have to help him. There's different agents we can use. Human chorionic gonadotropin is certainly one of them. Stepping down the esters of testosterone is another vehicle, another medium to, to go with. And at this point, when he's on HCG, you can use, more for fertility though, small doses of clomiphene if the HCG itself is not working over this period to rescue the man. Now, this is novel and this is new and we have no data for this, but this is the new utility we're seeing. We're seeing clomiphene as an add-on agent with HCG for anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. Very interesting. Side effects of clomiphene. These side effects are going to be secondary to the estrogenic effects. Remember, it's an it's a estrogen modulating agent. It's going to block at certain sites and it's going to be pro-stimulatory estrogenic throughout other parts of the body. This is true. Men on TRT that I've seen, I take care of myself, we see that if you measure estradiol on clomid, clomiphene, it goes up very systemically. So, number one, we have to talk about something that's very rare, but it's a classic side effect. Vision issues. Blurry vision more commonly, flashes in the eyes, and very rarely, thank God, vision loss. Definitely going to be dose dependent. If you're on a small dose of clomiphene, you'll, you probably won't see this. And as men use increased doses, not to mention with other agents, I give warning, using this drug with other SARMs and other peptides, we've definitely seen anecdotal and case reports of men having partial areas of blindness that's been permanent even after 18 months, seeing very good retinal and ophthalmologic experts. So please be very careful with this for the vision. Although I think it is very, very rare. I have patients that are on this as a sole agent for TRT, as I said, for many years, and there's no vision issues at all. But they have to be monitored very, very closely, as I do, not to mention with other doctors. Next, liver. So this is a stimulatory estrogenic agent, probably in the liver, although we don't know this. So there's been thought in the bodybuilding and in the anabolic expert world that another drug, tamoxifen, 
uh, another selective estrogen receptor modulator may be a better drug to use versus aromatase inhibitors for gynecomastia. Why? Because there will be less deleterious effects on the lipid profile. We're back in the liver here. The HDL, we know that aromatase inhibitors, not to mention testosterone, not to mention steroid levels, testosterone and other anabolic steroids, are deleterious and destructive to the HDL. That chronically can be a severe problem for early progression of coronary artery disease for men. So, this is interesting. We don't know about these effects on the liver, but this is not known to be a liver damaging or a liver toxic agent. This is not what I'm saying. It, it has effects in the liver. And if you're gonna be on this drug, safer TRT for decades potentially, we have to wonder what it's gonna to do to the liver itself because it does mediate through the liver. And we've seen rare anecdotal reports of liver cysts and potentially cro chronic liver disease. But I think this is very, very rare. And there's no mechanism for this that we've seen in repeat studies to prove it though. But I just want to bring it to report. Side effects continued. DVTs. So we know that if a person has a potential for a hypercoagulable state, they're going to get potential DVTs, clots in the lower legs, classically, that can go up to the lungs and cause a pulmonary embolism. Very dangerous. Now, this is a multifactorial state. But if you think about a pro-estrogenic state, that this drug can certainly lead to increased estrogen, estrogen in the body. Can it lead to increased DVTs and clots throughout the body? We don't know. Again, I've seen more anecdotal reports of this causing and occurring to men, but it's never used alone. And these are not true medical studies. These are just anecdotal reports and case reports. So I'm just simply reporting this. But it is interesting and concerning that if you're a man and you have a hypercoagulable past, for many reasons, you have just genetics for this in your family history, you, you'd want to be careful for this agent, uh, using this agent for short, even long chronic use. And the last part, the amazing potential for causing paradoxic gynecomastia and even testicular tumors is reported. Remember, this drug is going to increase, if you take it by itself, estrogen levels systemically. And there's been rare reports of men complaining of gynecomastia over time. It is interesting. Remember, it's not tamoxifen. It's the same class as tamoxifen, but it's not tamoxifen. So with this, I close my presentation on clomiphene. It's such an amazing history. Everyone, please be careful with any agents. You need to see a physician and be monitored very closely. And I really hope this helps. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.